Good morning and happy Friday, everybody. I am Ariel, your public services librarian, and this is the second episode of Lit Lattes, um, HML's little show about books. New ones, old ones, favorites, and not so favorites. So every episode, we're going to start off with new releases because who doesn't love new stuff? So uh, these are ones that just came through. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is Carol the Ninth by, and I'll probably get her name wrong, Tamsin Murr. Um, so this is a fantasy book. It's the sequel to Gideon the Ninth, uh, which we also have downstairs. I just saw it. Um, it's a book about grief and guilt, about committing a terrible sin and doing everything possible to forget it. And plus the cover just looks so boss and the glare in here is terrible but it's super fun the next one that we're going to talk about is me and white supremacy by layla f sad we're high tech this week by the way like we have earphones and mics bridget came back and now everything is like good thanks bridget <laughs> Um, right. So this actually started off as a workbook. Then the book expanded, um, to become this and talk about historical and cultural contexts, um, sharing moving stories and anecdotes, and it includes an expanded definitions, examples, and further resources, um, giving you the language to understand racism and to dismantle your own biases. So this is going to be one that you're going to want to grab. I'm getting like a lot of feedback in my ear. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I can get over it. It's fine. What? <laughs> I can hear like a lot of stuff. Sometimes. Like right now. It's weird. Anyways, it's totally fine. Uh, the next one, I read the summary to this. And usually I'm not like a science fiction or fantasy um, reader, but I realized that the last couple of books I've listened to are exactly that. Um, and I've really enjoyed them. So maybe I too am a sci-fi sci -fi reader, but, um, I had to tell everyone about this last night. So this is the first book, um, in the Outer Planets trilogy. It's, um, Ben Bova's Uranus. <laughs> um, Basically what this is about is um, a reverend wants to build um, a second ring around the planet for just the planet's poor, um, you know, people just a little bit down on their luck and they're going to name it heaven too. So he gets a billionaire to like fund the whole project, but uh, that guy has other plans, including a lot of illegal stuff and like human hunting so a little scary but it sounded super interesting and I probably shouldn't act super jazzed about it but it looks like a, 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 a very interesting read uh, the next one we are going to talk about is a debut novel um, I read really good reviews on this it's um, Elizabeth Wetmore's uh, Valentine it takes place um, during the next, well, not the next, but it was the next oil boom um, in Odessa, Texas in 1976. Um, and it just follows um, a woman who um, was attacked and um, just how justice kind of came from um, the bar rooms and the church um, in that community. So that sounded really interesting. There was another book I pulled um, yesterday that I wanted to talk about. It's not in the library because I usually like to show you what the books look like. Um, but somebody already took it, which is great because it sounded like a really good one too. Uh, it's called The Falling Woman by Richard Farrell. Um, so it's about this lady who um, survives a mid-air explosion of a passenger jet um, on a cross-country course from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco. Uh, but soon uh, she becomes a national media sensation uh, when she up and disappears from the hospital room. So... 
It sounds super, super interesting. The problem is there are too many books and not enough time. So <laughs> I tell Tina, our director, all the time that I need to quit this job to read all the books so I'm good at this job. There's just so many and not enough time. All right, so new audiobooks that came this week um, is Unspeakable Things by Jess Laurie. Um, and I'm just going to leave it at this. One by one, local boys go missing. One by one, they return changed, violent, moody, and withdrawn. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to read this one too. And by read, I mean listen. So check that one out. Uh, the next one is A Beautiful Crime by Christopher Bolin. Um, I'm just going to read the New York Times review um, for this because the summary was too long and I couldn't condense it. But it is a twisty grifter novel with a thriller running through its veins. But it's also a meditation on love, class, race, sexuality, and the legacy of bohemian culture tacking between Venice's soaring aesthetic beauty and its imminent tourist-riddled collapse, Bowen delivers another seductive and richly atmospheric literally, literary thriller. In short, it's about um, this couple who I think are doing jobs um, for uh, a very rich man in Venice, and then they become a little greedy. So... That sounded like a good one as well. So the next one, um, Tina, our director, uh, read and she just loved. So you've probably seen us talk about it before on various things. But it's a, a fun uh, little book that I just had to get on audio. It's called Heart of Junk. Uh, it's by Luke and I'm super bad at pronouncing names, Gaddis. Um, it's a hilarious debut novel about an eclectic group of merchants at a Kansas antique mall who become implicated in the kidnapping of a local beauty star pageant. Star. Sorry. I'm working on my caffeine right now. Uh, however, the dealers at the heart of America Antique Mall are too preoccupied by their own neuronic compulsions to take notice. So this is a super quick one. I think it's only four hours. I line at seven and a half, but still that's pretty short. So that is a super fun one as well. All right. What am I reading? So I just finished um, The Starless Sea. It was so good. And last night um, I had to grab a snack on my way home because I was hungry and I was like crying into it. And I was like, I can't wait to tell everybody about this. It was so good. And then I realized last week I forgot to tell you what it was because I just went on and on about how wonderful Erin Morgenstern is. Um, and there's a lot going on uh, in this book. It's over 500 pages. It was over 18 hours to listen to. Um, but it's just about a young man who finds a book of nested stories, including one that is about him. As he begins to investigate this mysterious book and his links to it, he finds himself drawn deeper and deeper into this place of pirates, lovers, secrets, and more importantly, stories. So... It was so good. I really um, encourage you to read it. I just saw that our copy came back to the library and that's sitting in quarantine, but it's wonderful. And also in the audiobook, it's a multiple cast. Instead of just one person, um, there are lots of people who read sections and it's just so beautiful. And I just realized I touched my mic and everything is fine. <laughs> Um, so this morning on my way to work, I started, um, my next book, which is, um, Ninth House by Lee, uh, Bardugo, Bardugo. Um, she wrote The Six of Crows, which I know is a super popular, um, book. I've heard a lot of people talk about it recently. Um, and I remember when this came out, uh, late last fall and, Stephen King was just wild about it and had a lot of good um, things to say. So I started reading that, well, listening to it this morning, and um, it's about uh, an upperclassman. Um, let me start over. I was like, I'll just free ball this one. 
I cannot do that. Um, <laughs> so I have to read you these things or I will mess them up and then this show will be twice as long as it needs to be. So as the novel opens, Alex's mentor, an upperclassman named Darlington, has gone missing. Meanwhile, a murder of a local go girl, Tara, occurs on campus, which is Yale, by the way, um, that Alex suspects is related to society activities. Um, this is about Yale's secret societies. And from the moment it started, I was like, yes, I am so, so interested in all of that, um, like secret societies. And um, the first hour and a half did not disappoint me at all. So I can't wait for my future drives to listen to this because I'm already hooked. So as Alex navigates this world of magic and mystery, she must uncover the truth about what happened to Darlington and Tara while other forces work to keep these secrets hidden. I really want to tell you a scene, but it's really big and I'll go on and on, but just please get your hands on it. It's so good so far. All right. I really feel like I rushed through everything because I just can't wait to talk to Emily. She is our library assistant here at HML. Um, in October, she'll be celebrating eight years with us. I'm so excited. Um, she is always reading and I'm always asking her what she is reading. Um, so because she lives in the library, not lives in the library, because she works in the library, of course she loves books. Um, and I'd also like to note that she does amazing work for uh, the superheroes in Rip Jeans. For those who are not local, it is um, a really wonderful animal shelter here in Oneonta. They do so much. Um, and look them up and help them out because they are amazing. So welcome, Emily. Good morning. What are you drinking, <laughs> are you drinking over, over there? there? Oh, I am drinking blueberry tea mm. in, my, in my Godiva chocolate mug. Yes, got to. I, it was Godiva chocolate. I was just, I thinking, was just that thinking that and hoping, and hoping that for you. For you. <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, well. right. <laughs> Another time. Another time. <laughs> it's still it's kind of warm, warm out, so, so. Everything's, everything's fine. fine. All right. All right. We're just so going to jump, jump right, right in. in. And, and I saw her, 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 her looking, looking through, through this book, book this, morning. this morning. And I, and I don't, don't remember, remember ever, ever being that big. big. But then again, but then I don't again, think I've, I don't ever, think I've read ever read this book. I know. It's shocking. And everyone's going to judge me as soon as they hear what your favorite book as a child was? Ah, well, I was always a Nancy Drew fan. Uh, I read probably every Nancy Drew book uh, there was back when I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> but I have to say that The Secret Garden was my all-time favorite as a child when I was growing up. It was just beautiful and I think I'm going to have to read it again because as I was looking through it to sort of familiarize myself with it, I thought, this is really good. I'm going to have to read it again. And I don't often do that. <laughs> I hate reading books twice. The only one I've ever read is The Great Gatsby, and it's because it's this big and you can get right through it. Don't you judge That once was enough for me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I find that once is always enough because there's too many books to read. Why reread another one? Gotta, exactly. No time to waste. I agree. <laughs> oh, I can never pick one because picking a favorite book is like picking your favorite children, like favorite child. But we don't have children. <laughs> so. <laughs> Four legged children. Yes. Oh, and that's even worse because then you definitely can't pick who's your favorite because they're pure. <laughs> yes. Um. So what are your top favorite three books? Well, I, I agree that it's hard to pick a favorite, even three. So I was hoping I could pick four. Absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So um, I would say The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stig Larson, uh, which got me going on a whole new direction with um, what I really love to read. Um, Running with Scissors by Augustine Burroughs. Um, it's, it can be disturbing for younger audiences, so, or young, younger readers, so I, it's definitely an adult book, 
um, but it's crazy wild and the movie doesn't do it justice. Um, the Alienist by Caleb Carr, which was recommended to me by uh, a friend of mine who is a bartender at Roots. Um, it's fantastic. And um, the Hunger Games trilogy by Suzanne Collins, which was my first dive into young adult stuff, actually, as an adult. <laughs> um, oh, go ahead. No, that that's... I, that's it. <laughs> Have you seen the show, The Alienist? Yes. And the sequel um, just started. Um, it's on right now. I'm recording it, so I haven't watched any of them. But I did read the book, which I'm blanking on the name of, of it. Angel of Darkness, I believe, is what it's hmm. called. Maybe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's on TV right now, too. Nice. Is the show so, doing the book any justice? Yes, for sure. Yeah, the actors um, do an amazing job of portraying the the characters um, from the book. So yeah, definitely. Excellent. I already know, and I'm so excited because I don't even I I don't think I've read anything in this particular genre, but Emily <laughs> loves a very specific genre, and I'm so excited for her to tell us about it. Um, so, tell us what it is. Well, it's uh, Nordic noir. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as Scandinavian noir, um, which tells you basically uh, all you need to know, which is that uh, the books are set in um, a Scandinavian country. They're all crime thrillers. Um, usually the uh, protagonist is a, a police officer or some you know, t type of detective. Um, oftentimes they have a lot of flaws, which I always like um, that in my protagonist, as long as they're not too hateful. <laughs> um, but yeah, that um, the Danes, the Swedes, the Norwegians, the, Ice, uh, the Icelandic people um, all do a great job uh, writing this, um, in this genre. And so I've discovered a lot of different authors um, since since working here that I like. Can you tell us some of your favorite ones? Oh, yes. <laughs> and away um, we go. <laughs> um, well, of course, Stig Larson, because uh, he was the one who he got me started actually on this whole journey, um, as I said. Um, I also love you, Nesba, or some people uh, pronounce his name Joe Nesbo because that's what it looks like, but in Norwegian, it's not pronounced that way. Um, Can you say uh, one more you time? See, you Nesbo? Okay. Although, interestingly, or maybe not interestingly, um, the author himself uh, will, when he's being interviewed um, by English-speaking people, he calls himself Joe Nesbo. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, he Don't doesn't do that. To Don't be... pander to us. <laughs> I know exactly. Um, then there's also a Danish author, um, UC Adler Olsen, um, Anne Holt, who um, Unesba calls the godmother of um, Nordic noir. Um, she is Norwegian as well. Um, and then there's a uh, an Icelandic author named Arnaldur uh, Indridason. Um, they have a very difficult language to pronounce, <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's his name. And another Icelandic author is Ragnar um, Jonasson. Um, so those are my my go to uh, Nordic noir authors. There's some uh, female. Icelandic authors that I also like. Uh, Ursa Sergador Dotter, um, very challenging last name. I love it. <laughs> but Icelandic authors, are, well, not just the authors, but the Icelandic people um, usually just go by their first name. Um, like they have a pet. What's that? Like Beyonce? 
kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that, except that it's because they're a patronymic um, society, which means that their last name is actually the that you take uh, your father's first name and then add either son or daughter to it. So, <laughs> I so know about people just provide. Yeah, well, daughter is uh, the daughter. Like that's how you say daughter in Icelandic is daughter. <laughs> you just say it a little fun. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a fun fact about Iceland. <laughs> that is fun. Oh, I want to go there so bad, and you can too for like five hundred dollars, like round trip. So. Once we can travel, I suggest going yes. there. Yes. <laughs> yes. So fun and so beautiful. Um, this is my favorite question to ask people. And I feel kind of bad because I'm not a hateful person. But I love finding out what books people hate. I love it so much. Because I'm interested in why. So give them to me. All right. Well, I I only picked one. Um, That's good. <laughs> I, I I well, it's not that I have you know liked everything I've read, and I have taught myself that it's okay to stop reading something when you realize you can't stand it, or we talked about this strongly last week. <laughs> strongly dislike it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, so ironically, um, the book that I hate is written by one of my favorite authors. <laughs> Um, yes, it's called Macbeth, and so it it's his take on Shakespeare's Macbeth, which I have to admit I did not read <laughs> Shakespeare's Macbeth, um, but I could not stand it. I there was no character in the book that I could even remotely like, and I I need to at least be able to like somebody in the book and they all were terrible <laughs> people. So I stopped, I stopped reading it. I gave it, you know, zero stars basically. So zero, so. not even one, it doesn't even deserve a star. Does not. Oh, I'm so sad. Um, so there's a YouTuber that I started listening to, and I probably I think I talked about her last week, but her favorite series is written by one author, and her least favorite series ever is also written by the same author. I think I told you this when you told me that it was a, a book by him, which I've already forgotten how to do the pronunciation. Pronunciation? It's fine. You know, so I'll save my shame <laughs> oh like you're in good company it makes it makes sense they can't be 100 all the time i guess exactly all right what are you currently reading well i brought them with me i am reading this is a um definitely uh i don't usually read books like this but Crazy Rich Asians, um, which I have not seen the movie yet. I think there's a movie. Um, but it intrigued me once I was hearing about the movie. Um, it's kind of gossipy, um, <laughs> which is not usually what I <laughs> like to read. Um, but it's, it's interesting because it's all about uh, the society in... Um, well, Singapore and Hong Kong and um, with the, well, rich Asians. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and they are actually quite crazy sounding. So I've, I haven't gotten very far in the book yet. So um, there are a lot of characters in this book. Um, it's uh, involving um, rather uh, large family of cousins and aunts and uncles and and they all get their own chapters and um so i'm i'm starting to uh, get to know all of the characters and they're pretty crazy 
Now this um, is not, oh, I'm sorry. I have a little no. side, side thing. So, and this wasn't one of the questions, but this is just an opinion based one. Do you like stories that have tons of characters in them? Generally. I do. Um, I do. It's not like I seek them out, but um, but yeah, I do. I like to learn about different different personalities in a, in a story. So yeah, for sure. Um, which brings me to my next book, actually, that I'm read also reading, but I'm well, I'm listening to. Um, this is a Tom Clancy, although it's written by uh, Mark Cameron. It's Power and Empire, and it's a um, Jack Ryan. Uh, book and there are a lot of characters in that. Um, I won't go into detail because um, someone might want to read it, and I don't want to give anything away. But um, the, yeah, the characters that are in that are throughout the series, you know, I've gotten to know the different characters, and I really like them a lot. Um, so that's also what I'm reading. And the last one is a, a nonfiction. I thought it was just me, but it isn't by Brene Brown. All right, we're big fans of Brene here. Oh, good, I didn't realize that. I only just heard of her recently. Um, so I'm, I know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I don't really read a lot of nonfiction. Um, and to be honest, this is a self-help book. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, exactly. So, yeah, so I've just started reading this as well. Um, so yeah, I'm reading three books at once. Brave. <laughs> I can only do two and they have to be very different <laughs> because then like storylines get tangled in my brain. Right. Well, these three different. are totally different from each other, so. Yes, so the, <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Clancy doesn't write books like that. Weird. A self-help Tom Clancy book. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, um, so I know you're reading uh, three right now. Um, what's on your to-read list? Like, what are some uh, books that you want to read coming up here in the near future? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I have a huge spreadsheet of, of books. <laughs> you know, as I'm bar know. as I'm barcoding the books, I see them and I think, oh, that looks interesting, and I'll never remember it. So I put it on a spreadsheet. So I've got a lot of titles, but um, I wanted to pick something that was going to be different from the. You know, I figured I would need a break from crazy rich Asians after I'm done. You know, just to cleanse my palate because it's so different from my normal. So um, I had already ordered um, from Interlibrary Loan, The Poet by Michael Connolly. This is a different series than, um, this is actually old, <laughs> older series, um, the Jack McAvoy series. So when I heard about that, I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I like his other books. So I thought I would give that a try. But then I thought I might need to go back to some Nordic Noir. So I might read Lethal Investments by Shell Dahl or K.O. Dahl as he sometimes goes by, um, which we have here at the library. And this is the first of a series. Um, and this is quite old too. It was uh, originally written in 1993, but only translated in 2011 into English. <laughs> Kidding. So. That's what I got. Nice. All right. You survived all your uh, I was gonna say premeditated questions. The ones that I gave <laughs> you, so you knew like there wasn't gonna be any surprises. So now it's time for the surprise question. Um <laughs> last week we, we did a little fun little quiz. This week, um <laughs> I found this on BuzzFeed and I laughed a lot. Um, it's who said it, Shakespeare or a random person on Tumblr. Now for those of you who don't know what Tumblr is, it's um, a short form <laughs> blog. Cause I was like, I know what Tumblr is, but I don't know what Tumblr is. Um, I don't. 
It's fun. Check it out. Um, well, some of these uh, got me caught up, but it's fine. All right. The first quote is, God may judge you, but his sins outnumber your own. Shakespeare or a random person on Tumblr? Well, it sounds like it would be a Shakespeare quote, but I feel like this is a tricky trick question. <laughs> so which is it? So, um, I'm going to go with Tumblr. It is Tumblr. This is a quote that was concerning taking candy from a bowl. <laughs> of fun of course right. <laughs> of course it is oh there's one on here that you're really gonna love but it's not this one um hell is empty and all the devils are here shakespeare or random person on tumblr uh, for all i know all of these are trick, trick questions but i'm gonna say shakespeare it is Shakespeare. Um, ah. It's originally from The Tempest, spoken by Ariel. I put that in. I didn't, I, I didn't make that up, but I was excited. There were many questions, and I chose this one specifically for that. <laughs> because it's not every day. Oh. Um, all right. Do I look like the kind of man who dies? <laughs> Shakespeare or a random person on Tumblr. Uh, man, that's that's hard. Um, I'll say random person on Tumblr. It is. It was about uh, a dream where he saw Prince at an Elton John concert and Prince said to him, do I look like a man who dies? Legend. <laughs> Oh, so fun. All right, the next one. One man in his time plays many parts. One man in his time plays many parts. I'll, I'll go with Shakespeare. It is Shakespeare. <laughs> and you're doing really well. I didn't tell her any of these. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> you're just really smart. Um, yes, so this is the part of the All the World's a Stage speech spoken by Jacques in As You Like It, which I have not read. I'm, I haven't really, I haven't really read a lot of Shakespeare, so it's fine. Um, you're gonna love this, it's very short. Not to you, egg. Shakespeare or a random person on Tumblr? <laughs> what, you egg? Yes, end sentence. Is it a question? Yes. <laughs> what do you egg? Uh, Shakespeare. It is. Uh, this <laughs> sounds kind of like a Tumblr insult, but it's actually from Macbeth, which is funny <laughs> because you talked about oh, it. That is hilarious. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, that wasn't in the in his version? Weird. It might have been, you know, later on after I stopped reading. <laughs> That's right. How far did you get into it? I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> I I think I, I stuck it out way farther than I should have. And I really felt like I wasted my time. When I could have been reading something, you know, good. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, so that's the end of the quiz. 100% you win a Hello. high five from me later, and it's going to be a distance one because I'm not getting near you. <laughs> and rightfully so. Um, also, we do this in completely separate rooms, as you can tell, so we can you can see our mouths and more importantly, our <laughs> facial expressions. Uh, uh, so before I do this week in history, um, Sunday is Book Lovers Day, so um, I want you to post on social media. This is for everybody. It's not specifically Emily. Emily, <laughs> I need you to do these single things. So um, please use the hashtags um, Oneonta Reads uh, and Book Lovers Day, and we would love to share that. I want to get so much more into sharing things on social media because we're already there. Um, so let's all get connected. 
So uh, this week in history, it's not long-term history. Uh, it was just last, last year that we lost Toni Morrison. We know her, of course, from uh, Beloved, The Bluest Eye, and the Song of Solomon. And I just wanted to leave uh, or end this episode with a quote from her. And I don't know why, but like, I haven't read a lot of Toni Morrison. Um, there should be something about her that like gets to my soul. So um, this was one of the, because I have no soul. I'm just kidding. I, I'm glad I got you drinking. That wasn't planned, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I wanted to, to just leave on this quote. Um, I tell my students, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. So this is not just a grab bag candy game. And I just got choked up and now everyone's going to see. But I thought that was just um, a really important quote from um, someone very beloved. So that's what Latte is for this week. Thank you so much for joining. Emily, thank you. It was so fun talking to you. Fun. All right. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Take care.